Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over reading and writing to CSV files. So in the previous few videos, we went over file handling, so reading and writing to a text file using the F stream. And we also went over the string stream. And if you wanna check out those videos, I'll link them in the video description below. In this video, we're going to go over CSV files, and basically they're similar to text files, except instead of holding just plain text, a CSV file holds data. And so you would have rows and columns, and within each row, you would have data values separated by commas. And quite often, if you download data, it might be saved as a CSV file or in a CSV format, okay? So let's start with how to create a CSV file. So the procedure is pretty similar. Basically, you would need the F stream. So here I already included F stream, the file stream. And for this example, let's say we have an array of student names. In this case, I didn't want to bother coming up with names. So I just use the names of fruits in English. And we also have another array, which represents the grades of each student. And in total, we have six students. So Apple has 87, Banana has 91, and so on. So what I want to do is create a CSV file with six rows, and within each row, we have two points of data, the student name and the student's grade. So let's start by creating the F stream. So F stream, my file, and here I can do my file.open, and I'm going to name this file student-grades.csv. Okay, so don't forget the extension. And here we need to specify the mode. So in this case, I'm going to do iOS out. So we have in, out, and a pen, okay? So out is for writing. And as I mentioned in my previous videos, if you are not using namespace std like I am over here, then you would have to add the qualifiers. So it would be std colon colon fstream and std colon colon iOS colon colon out. And every time you open the file, you want to free up the memory after you are done with the file. So here I'm going to do my file dot close. All right, so let's write to a CSV file. And if you somehow have this file in your directory with the same name, then when you are using the write mode, it's going to overwrite the contents of that file. In our case, the file does not exist, so it's just going to create a new file. So the first thing we need to do is check to see that the file opens successfully. So here I'm going to do if my file dot is open, and then we're just going to iterate through the students and grades and write them into the file. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than student count, i plus plus, so writing is exactly the same as with text files, except you would separate each data value with a comma. So here I'm going to do my file students at index i, comma, and there's no space within the commas, so it's just one comma and grades of i, and then end line. All right, so that's all we need to write to our file. So here you can see, I don't have any CSV files. So let's save and run the program. All right, so we ran the program. Now let's check our folder. And you can see we have a CSV file. And if you notice, since I'm using Windows, I also have Microsoft Excel, and you can open up CSV files in Excel. So it's basically like a spreadsheet. So if I just open this, you can see we have our data over here. So we have the student names in the first column and the student grades in the second column, okay? And of course, just like with these text files, I can use the built-in notepad software to open this CSV file. So let's see what the content actually looks like. And you can see it's literally a text file. So you have the student name, comma, and student grade. And we have six rows. So this is what it looks like underneath. But if you use software like Excel or if you use Google Spreadsheet, then you would see the data from the CSV file displayed in a nicer way. And of course, just like with the text files, I can simply just pass this into the constructor. So I don't need to call the open function. I can just do this. So here I'm just going to delete the file and let's save and run the program. All right. And you can see our files over here again. Okay. And if you are just writing to the file, you can use OF stream. So this stands for output file stream. So you don't have to pass in the mode. So here I'm going to delete the file again and let's save and run the program, all right? And there you go, we have our CSV file, okay?
And just like with the text files, you can also append to the CSV file. If you are writing to a file, it's going to replace all the contents within the file. Maybe sometimes you want to append data to the CSV file, in which case you would not use OFStream, you would use FStream again, but this time you would do iOS colon colon app. So this is the append mode, and I'm going to get rid of this. And here I can just append one more line, so I can do my file. And let's say lemon 93. Let's save and run the program. All right, now let's check our file. So over here, I'm going to open it up in Excel again. And here you can see we have a new entry down here, okay? All right, so we have our CSV file created, and now you know what CSV files are. Now let's read from a CSV file. So let's get rid of this, and we don't need this bit anymore. And let's change the mode to iOS in. So this is read only. Alternatively, you can just use the IF stream. So instead of F stream, you can do IF stream, and that way you don't have to pass in the mode. All right, so we are going to open this file and I'm also going to close the file at the end. And over here, I'm going to check again if my file dot is open. And here we're going to read from the file. So the first thing we're going to do is get each line from the file. And from that line, we are going to split the contents using the commas. So here I'm going to do string line and for the input, I'm going to use the getLine function. So while getLine, we're going to pass in the file stream. So over here, I'm going to do my file. And we're going to pass in the contents of that line into our string variable line. So while we can get the line, so while we can still read lines from the file, I'm going to just print out the line. So let's save and run the program. And you can see this is the data inside our CSV file. So I'm going to comment this out. And now I want to extract each individual part of that line. So we have a string for the student name and an integer for the student grade. But since this is a file, everything is actually in text. So what you want to do is get each individual part that is separated by the commas. For that, we're going to use the string stream. So here I'm going to create a string stream. SS, and I can actually pass in the string directly into the stream. So we're going to get the line over here, and we're going to pass in the line into the string stream. So if you don't know what string stream is, I have a video on string streams, and I'll link in the video description for you to learn more about it. But basically, it's similar to IO stream and F stream in that you are getting input and output. With string streams, you would use it to parse and format a string. So here, I'm going to parse the string and look for commas and separate each individual value. So here, I'm going to create a variable, string student, and I'm going to call it the getLine function. And I'm going to pass in the string stream, and we're going to pass in the value to student. Now, by default, the getLine function will give you all of the text up until the next line character. But we can specify which character we want to stop at. In this case, for each line, we want to stop at the comma. So now I'm going to see out student, and I'm going to just add space here. So let's save and run the program. And you can see for each row inside our CSV file, we are getting the data that is in the first column. So anything up to the first comma, we are going to save it to the student variable and then print it out. So here you can see we have all the student names. And now let's do the same and get the grades. All right, so for getting the grades, I'm going to create another variable. And as I mentioned before, since we're getting the text, everything is a string. And from the string stream, we're going to get another column value. So here I'm going to do string grade, and I'm going to call get line ss. So the string stream, we're going to assign the value to grade and we're going to assign it the value up until the next comma. And here let's print out the grade. So see out grade and let's also print out end line. So let's save and run the program. And you can see for each row in the CSV file, we parse through each column and we have the student names and the student grades. Now, currently this value is a string, but you can convert it to an integer and use it for your program. Let's say you want to get the average student grade, then you would just convert this to an integer. 
and add up the grades and divide it by the number of students. All right, so that's pretty much how you can read and write to a CSV file. And in the next video, I'm going to go over a practice problem you can do for working with CSV files. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And as always, if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.